All right, everybody. Um, I am going to do something that I've been promising to do for a long time now. Uh, going back nearly five years ago, I kind of went on a little bit of a learning spree and figured out how to use Cosworth Pi Toolbox with the uh, files generated by the GM Performance Data Recorder and kind of sent me down a rabbit hole of learning how to do data analysis, learning how the program worked, and, and frankly started making these videos. Um, things have gotten a lot easier in the last five years. So this was the original video I did in, in January of, oh gosh, what, 2019, 2018, and um, 2018. And what I wanted to do was do another version of it with the way you do it today. It's a heck of a lot easier. Um, so I'm going to, I have a new PC here. Um, it's pretty much a fresh build. So I thought, let's show what it takes to you to get from just any old laptop to have Pi Toolbox up and running and useful, uh, for you. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, go to Cosworth's website. So you can go directly to this URL, or if you just go to Cosworth.com, I'll show you how to navigate there, at least as of today. Uh, a couple of non-intuitive things about this. Um, under products, you actually want race products. And then if you scroll down and you pick, I think actually a number of these will work, but I always pick GT Sports. And then you go down the software. And this is where you're going to see their various kind of pro software packages. So Pi Toolbox is what we're interested in today. Um, this is different than the, the GM Toolbox um, which is a little bit more simplified, but not quite as powerful. So we're going to go ahead and click on Pi Toolbox. And you're going to get this page. And if you scroll down, there's two things you need to do. Um, one is Pi Toolbox Lite Edition is free. So you don't need to pay anything. Um, you do need to get a license key, though. So what you're going to do is fill out this form, first name, last name, email address, hit submit. Uh, I just did this a few minutes ago just to kind of save time in the video. Uh, it kind of sit, sat there for about a minute before it finally submitted, but it did go through. Um, and what you're going to get back is a couple of emails. So let's take a look at this. The first email you get is going to be something like this. Uh, it's basically going to have a link for you to click to actually validate that that was your email address and that you want the license. Uh, I've kind of edited out the request ID since that's for me. Um, and then when you click on that, you're going to go to a web page and you'll also get another email that looks something like this. And it's going to have your license key. And it's going to be, uh, again, in here, I've just kind of X'd it out just so everybody doesn't have my license key that watches this video. So once you've done that, the next thing you're going to want to do is download the software. So I would pick whatever the latest version is. Um, as of today, it is this version 12.3 update six. Um, I've already downloaded it, so we'll go ahead and, and pull that up and install it. But uh, it's important to kind of realize that the, the software is the same no matter what version of the software. If you're getting light, if you're getting pro, if you're getting ultra, it's all the same binary. So you're gonna download this file and install it. And the only thing that turns features on and off is the license key that you have. So I'm gonna go ahead on up, go to downloads, Come on. And we're going to go to Pi Toolbox. And you're going to see inside of that zip file, you've got two files. One is a PDF file, and the other is a self extracting installer. So, uh, Pi Toolbox Motorsports Car. So, I'm just going to go ahead and extract these. And now we'll go ahead and double click and install it. So it's probably worth pointing out, I haven't actually done a dry run of this. I'm, I'm literally kind of doing this live because I figure that's the only way to have a, a, a good kind of authentic walkthrough. So agree to license uh, conditions, hit install, hit yes. So we may hit some bugs and if we hit some bugs or not bugs, but hit some issues and we'll have to fix them on the fly here in the video. So now we are just uh, installing the binaries and it's actually going to install not just the application, but also uh, the licensing configurator. So if we just go ahead and hit launch, let's see what happens. 
Pi Toolbox 12.3, no license available. And you see this link, software licensing configuration tool. Um, if for some reason you don't see this and click on it, it's actually in your start menu. It installs that as a separate application. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we get this little screen. So we're going to go ahead and add. And I guess I'll have to edit out that I'm going to paste my actual license key in there. And it's reaching out, authenticating your machine and activated the product. So now you'll see uh, we've got actually versions 9 through 12 light all um, available to us. Uh, there's really no reason I've found to use anything less than the latest. Uh, node locked simply means that the license is specific to this machine. Uh, they actually have a mechanism, like if you're a pro race team, where you can you can buy licenses and store them on a server and then people kind of check them out and check them back in, but we're not, we're not doing that here. So we're going to close that, do that. And, uh, we could start with default motorsport. It really doesn't matter at this point. I want to save changes. And now what we have, if you watch my old video is literally, um, a blank workbook. So that's great, but I've tried to make life a little easier. So if you go back to the web browser, you go to hypodriver.com. And go to resources and scroll down. And uh, what you will see is, um, those are map files, uh, workbook. So probably need to do another round of updates on these. Um, but these are workbooks for Pi Toolbox where I've gone ahead and actually um, pre-configured a bunch of displays for you. Uh, the reason why I'm doing multiple workbooks is a couple of things. Um, one is the, um, the PDR-1, which is what you have if you have a C7 Corvette, CTSV, ATSV, Gen 6 Camaro with PDR. Um, there's some differences in the channels between those and the PDR-2 which is what you have. You have a C8 Corvette or a Cadillac Blackwing. Um, and so I've started doing different workbooks just because there's some channels that are in one car and not in the other. There's also some weird differences, like they change the steering angle from positive is right to positive is left. And so there's just some little math things I have to do in there. But if you just want to pick one of these, driver light is the one um, that I would suggest for normal, um, like going to the track and trying to figure out um, you know, where you can pick up time. So most of my, like, how do I go faster videos are using a workbook like this. So just click on it and we'll go ahead and, uh, it's right there. It's already been downloaded. So now what I'm going to do is go over here and do file open. And we're going to go to downloads and open up this workbook. And again, we're not going to save changes. And now what you have is a workbook, but you'll see the outings are unknown. So uh, these outings kind of, when I made them, they refer to file locations on my old system. So they're not gonna load correctly. Uh, so you need to replace them. So what you wanna do is just uh, right click, replace outing. And I, on my desktop, I've put a couple of files here. So we'll do that one. And then we'll do again, replace outing. And I think this is the second one. Um, we'll do that. And so now you've got data. So, you know, this here has got some uh, tabular outing data that I, I tend to use. So kind of a good quick look to say, you know, okay, what was my, um, you know, what was my max outdoor air temperature, intake temperature, coolant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, splits. Um, this is, uh, again, a sector by sector breakdown um, of the track. And, um, you know, basically looking at segment times to try to find lap times. Compare. This is your actual uh, you know, my, my most common kind of chart for doing data overlays. So you've got right off the bat, accelerator, brake, speed, 
Delta Time and Derivative Delta Time, as well as your videos and your map. These are some map displays. Um, so this is actually, I guess that looks like Summit Point, Maine. I guess it tells me right there. So here I've got some maps that show you oversteer angle, uh, how much accelerator you're using where, how much brake where. Uh, this one is um, basically full throttle is green, um, braking is red, and uh, coasting is in blue. So again, kind of a way to graphically see how much time you're spending either, you know, not at full throttle or braking. And then over here, this is just the G-sum. So this is kind of a quick thing to get you started. Uh, we also got some tire data. Uh, feel free to play with it. But as you can see, we're up and running. It's only been a couple of minutes. Um, this is a heck of a lot easier than the old days where you had to go in and configure your distance channel and add math channels and add displays. Uh, try to get you running up and quickly. And then I'm going to keep updating these um, these workbooks up on the website. Uh, I'd say if you have questions or you would like to see something in the workbook, uh, go ahead and post them up in the, the comments to this video. But I hope this uh, is helpful and I hope this gets you all up and running quickly with uh, Pi Toolbox.